for this flag conference on will now be recorded. Okay, I'm here. Do you need my door closed? Yeah. Okay. 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 Here. Everybody, everybody ready? Good to go. Go ahead. Hi, Renee. Can you hear Renee? Okay, you're, you are flashing around sort of, so I, know. I wasn't I was sure just, if you were live. I was just about to, I was typing a, in the chat that I'm gonna, my internet is really crappy right now and I was gonna reboot, but it looks like I'm back. So if uh, for some reason I drop off again, I'm just gonna reboot. So if you see me disappear for a second, don't be alarmed. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, I'll make a motion to call the meeting to order. Do I have a second? Second, Trustee Galusha. Dorothea, would you call a vote, please? Sure, Trustee Lamphere. Lily? Thanks. Lily? It's me. <laughs> Lily, Lily, you're she's muted. On, she's on mute. You're, she's on mute, but she's muted, Lily. Awesome. You're, you're frozen and you're muted. She's solid ice. Um, Trustee yeah. Stetzer. <laughs> Stetzer, I. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Motion is good. <laughs> um, so, um, Dorothea, did Dan did Dan tell you he has a scheduling conflict? Yes, I did okay. get that email and passed it on. Okay, um, Lily, are you back? Okay. Mm, she's green, but she's not there. <laughs> Lily is frozen. <laughs> and I've got a 70 pound dog in my lap. Okay. <clears throat> um, Renee, uh, you, uh, you're, you're muted, Renee. I didn't have anything to say. Am I supposed to be saying oh, okay. something? Well, I was going to say something. I was jealous because you got your flag out today and I meant to put my flag out today and I forgot. So I well, the little the little fastener thing broke before I headed to my meeting. So I made sort of a makeshift temporary thing, and the darn thing fell halfway through. So I finally got the right tool and I fixed it, and now it looks it looks much better. But um, yeah, it's a good day to have well, it out. It was a nice photograph I saw on Facebook of, of oh, the flag. Thanks. A nice a nice way to celebrate a new era. Okay, um, the first issue we have is I want to have a brief executive session and give you some updates on our staffing at Village Hall. So I'm going to make a motion that we enter executive session to discuss a personnel issue. Okay, I'm stepping out so you could take care of that. Uh, no, I think Mary, you need to stay. Yeah, Mary, you can stay. <laughs> Come back, wow. Mary. Okay. <laughs> Do we need a yeah, we need a second. I'll second. Okay. Uh, Dorothea will need a vote. Okay. Trustee Lamphere, are you there? Trustee Stetzer? That's her aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Oh, I think we got Lily. Trustee Lamphere, are you ready for executive session? What's your motion? Uh, okay, I would make a motion that we hire uh, Marina Marina Pacino and Brooklyn Thomas for the position of deputy clerk at a rate of seventeen dollars per hour, based on the fact that they have the basic skills for the position. We have the funds available and on the recommendation of the interviewers. So I'm making the motion that we hire these these two candidates. Can I throw I'll in a start date? Uh, can I throw in a start date of Monday? Yes. 
I'll second Frank's motion with the start date of Monday. Dorothea, would you call a vote, please? Okay. Um, Trustee Setzer? You're muted. Yes, sir. You just went out. Trustee Lamphere? Lamphere, aye. Aye. Got Stetzer, Trustee Galusha. Darn it. My camera. Trustee Galusha, okay, I'm turning aye. my camera off. Sorry. I'm 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 an eye. I got your eye. <laughs> Mayor Corby. Corby aye. Motion passes. The village office thanks you with big hearts and hugs. Hey everyone, I'm going to um I'm gonna restart my computer in the hopes that it um kickstarts my uh internet. It usually does it, but so that I will stop stalling out. So I'll we will pause for, for, for two minutes to give you time to reboot, okay. Renee, okay? Full of crew. I don't know. If I can you have quorum, so you can keep going. I don't want to slow the process down. <laughs> no, it's, oh. it, we don't have a long agenda, so we're going to wait for you anyway. It's, it's fine. No, this will be fabulous. I think you're going to like these two individuals very much. Great attitudes. Maybe I'll try again too, instead of being on the phone. Let me see if I can dial in again. Okay. Okay, Renee's coming back in. We're waiting for Lily. She's trying to reboot and come back in too. Oh my goodness. I have green light. I don't understand what's going on. It's really weird. And I'm actually plugged directly in. I don't, it's not even on Wi-Fi. So I don't know what the heck is, is happening. It's very frustrating. Uh, let's see, is Lily better or no? Like she's frozen. frozen. I think she's frozen again. I need to call in. I might have to do that too if this didn't work, but. Oh, I got you twice in here, Renee. Maybe that's part of the problem. You have me in there twice? Oh. Yeah. I'm going to try yeah. to remove this other one. You have me in there twice? That's weird. Yeah. So I'm going to dismiss the dual you personality at work. <laughs> That's the last thing I need right now, or two of me. That's really just not good. Some of us put like okay, a clone. I removed <laughs> that one. I removed that one. So maybe. We'll see if, I wonder if out. somehow I clicked, like double clicked the uh, app somehow. All right. Well, maybe that does. Okay, we now we're just waiting on Lily to come back in. I'll be right back. Okay, Lily, is that you? It I'm is. Yep, that's you. Okay, I'm gonna edit the name. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're just waiting for 
from Bob. Okay. Okay. All right. So we have everybody but Bob. He's just grabbing a cup of coffee. It doesn't look like I have any news alerts to share with the board tonight. <laughs> I won't be your news commentator. Right. We don't need any extra drama. I feel like I've, I've yeah. had a lifetime full. Yeah. yeah, there's no no political drama, that's for sure. We don't need that. Okay. Um, Mary, would you like to uh, move to the budget transfers that you're seeking approval of tonight? Not yet. I have one last piece of uh, oh. business to deal with for Brooklyn and Marina, and that is for the approval of the um, comptroller the classes training. for the accounting classes. The introduction to accounting, a basic accounting school is $85 for the three-day class. Advanced uh, principles and procedures is another $85. So what I am seeking for right now is to have approval to have the basic class and the advanced class um, reserved for both individuals for a total expense of $340 for both classes for two people. One starts March 9th and the next one starts on April 13th. So move. Do I have a second? Lance, I'll second that, Trustee Galusha. Thank you. Uh, Dorothea, would you call a vote, please? Will do. Let's see. Trustee Stetzer, are you there? It looks frozen. No, she's not. Trustee Lanfear? Lanfear, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Trustee Stetzer? I just had a quick quick question. I I uh, got a little hiccup here before I could ask before the vote. That I mean, we usually have training that's like included in our budget, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it we're is. just authorizing, we're just authorizing the this current. Correct. Normally we go to NICOM um, in September. We don't have that happening. We had monies that we did have set aside, which have not been used. Uh, so. I'm tapping into those funds for the accounting classes. We're okay, good. sounds good. So I I didn't know if there was any other discussion. Sorry to hold up the vote, but I think I'm the last one to vote, and I yep. vote aye. <laughs> All right, motion passes. Oh, Mayor Corby. Yes. Oh, Corby, aye. <laughs> motion passes. One job, Dorothea. One job. <laughs> I'm sorry. I set the stage for that. That was my fault because I said I was That's the okay. last. That's All right. All, all is forgiven. Okay, budget transfers. Right. One more little piece before I go to budget transfers. I just want to let the board know I have submitted uh, four chips again for the uh, reimbursement funds for the T450. So at this point, our 80% number for um, this submission is 34,160 versus what the truck and the part and the accessories were which is 34,656. The June submission will have the balance of this uh, for 4.95 13 plus harders for 29.40. So 
We are submitting to CHIPS 34,16093. This money should be coming back to us mid-March. So we will be made whole again. And um, that's just an FYI for, for the board. Okay. Mary, Thank you. Mary, uh, 34,169 includes the attachments. Yeah, the actual cost of the truck and the accessories was 34,656.06. The chips uh, ceiling limit for us for right now for submitting was 34,16093. We still have 20% monies that are sitting there that we can't touch um, until the governor releases those funds. So that is why I'm not, I can't put in the full amount of the truck, but I will capture that uh, on the June submission because those will have gone through another uh, fiscal year for the, for the state and then we'll have a new allot allocation plus whatever's left in our rollover, which should be about $5,000 at this point that I know of. I'm waiting on a letter from Albany that has not happened. Supposedly, it was mailed out on Friday, but I haven't seen it yet. So we'll be the made whole fairly quick. The invoice that that I had, which could be an old one, was uh, cited the cost as 32348 And then the attachments were were in addition to that. Correct. What you have on those uh, two invoices, one was 32, the other one was like 50, something, 5,000 something. Those included tax. So I we retracted the tax from it. So the actual cost between the two of them minus the tax was 34,656. I can't hear you. You're muted. Thirty-four thousand six fifty-six, right? Correct. And that was paid for last week in the abstract. Yeah. Okay. So now we're just turning that money over to the state to get reimbursement for those funds. They should be coming back to us mid-March. Okay. 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 No other questions. Bob, budget transfers. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, wait, yeah, wait a minute. Finally, budget transfers. Wait, 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 hang on. Wait a minute. No other questions regarding the vehicle or the transfers. No, no, we haven't gotten to the transfers. We're, the doing them, we're doing them right now. Okay. The vehicle, the vehicle is all said and done, and hopefully March fifteenth, we have check for thirty-four thousand dollars in our hands to take care of the payment for. Uh, the reimbursement payment for the truck. And I understand we have the vehicle now, and I guess it's running all right, Zach? You there, Zach? Yes. Yes, yeah. I'm here. We have the vehicle, and it's okay. It's 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 uh, satisfactory. So far, yes. It was its maiden voyage out uh, plowing the sidewalks, and it did great. Okay. And the sidewalks look great. Thank you, by the way. Right. I thank you but i uh, forgot today it was very nice to have them all swept so that was yeah. the new one the new one that did that one i'm sorry so the new vehicle did the sidewalks this morning yeah actually <clears throat> i sent out uh both the the new vehicle and the toolkit the new vehicle went out fine and um it ended up doing the whole route because the toolkit came back uh, about five minutes after i sent it out because they had a couple broken parts on it that we had to swap out so it took care of the entire route itself in probably maybe half the time as the S-130 was able to do it by itself. Nice. So it's, it's quite capable and it does a pretty good job. Uh, I forgot what snow looks like. I know. Stop it, you know, Pat. Honestly, Stop it. <laughs> normally, this amount of snow, we probably wouldn't um, have done the whole route, but we're all excited to get out in the machine. Yeah. yeah, and I heard you guys. I was in my backyard and I could hear you across the canal doing the DPW or something over there. I was like, what? They're we, plowing? It didn't make any sense, yeah. but yeah. We got a, a demo. <laughs> you know, well, we got a demo machine in uh, a couple of days ago that we're um, 
we're looking at as a, a cheap version of a truck. And um, so we've been kind of toying around on that too. God, you can hear us from the, from your house. I don't know what else you hear. So by the Keep the noise down over there. Yeah, no, you have to go away. Now that we have the dock in, I actually, my dog and I walked down there. And so that's the only reason. Ordinarily, I wouldn't oh. be able to hear you guys. But I'm literally, I like, I'm catty corner from you guys. Or kitty corner, whatever the, you know what I'm saying. Okay, let's carry on. Enough of the chair. Okay. okay. Uh, one more question, Zach. Who's operating the, the, the new vehicle? That'd be Jason Cernus, the new guy. Okay. Hey. He's quite capable. Okay, moving on to budget transfers, finally. <laughs> okay, last I'm uh, so excited one. about the budget transfers. They are, it's exhilarating. <laughs> um, yes, I presented them last week, and need, Dan needed time to, to think about these. Um, I am going to just say that of all of these, we have two big ones in here. I think, Frank, you had a question last week, and that was regarding how did I come up with the monies. Um, my uh, estimation for the monies that are moving out of the attorney categories. And if you look at the budgeted amount, um, let me see, under vendors, uh, vendor account sending funds, it's about a third of the way down under Osborne Municipal and Osborne HPB. We've got them paid to date. I have no other uh, bills outstanding from them. So the budgeted amount that was submitted in the beginning of the budget year last year was 90,000 and 28,000 uh, respectfully. We are at 20,000 and uh, just under 6,000 as of December 31st with five months to go. So the reason I am I went to take out just 5,000 out of each of those categories for right now, if things happen to really beef up and I need money, I can do another transfer if need be. Hopefully I, am, I won't have that happen. But they are basically covering um, if you go to the vendor accounts needing funds, it's the fourth line, third line down where it says Osborne PCP. And that category right now has a negative balance of $7,400 with no budget coming against a no budget amount. So that can't happen. Uh, as far as the comptrollers are concerned, if they came in today, they would probably slap my hands over that. So I wanted to make sure that we had some money in there versus no money in there. The reason we didn't have any money budget in there, and I went back to last year's notes thinking I made a horrendous error here um, about not putting any monies in. But when I look back at the notes that I received from the attorney, all business to do with PCP were supposed to be uh, sewn up by May 31st, 2020. So based on that information, um, the board did not place any money into this category for budgeting purposes. But as the year has rolled out, we see we do have money that we have spent. And so I, what I just did is um, basically took Osborne's categories and took money out of one to pay for the other, basically, so that we have all categories covered with a budget and without a negative number in the end. Because the, the purpose behind the budget transfers for us mainly is that we don't have categories that have negative numbers, we need to have them positive. And um, so that is the big, that's the big one there for uh, the attorney. The do, other- Before you go on, do we think um, given the latest um, uh, developments um, with, PCP that do we feel comfortable with how the money's allocated now, given that I know uh, Osborne Reed has had to do a little bit of work there? Um, I don't know what the fallout is at this point. As far as going forward into the new budget year, I have or I had Dorothea request of all attorneys a guesstimate again from them so that we could use that in our planning for next year, uh, for next year's budget. I don't know what the new development is. If they go to appeal or do any of that, um, we'll have to look at. I think, I think one of the provisions in talking to Hodgson Russ, what, what they're hoping is if 
if as expected, um, PCP comes in with a new proposal for the apartment complex on Monroe Avenue, um, it'll be <clears throat> our agree to settle will be in agreement that they will cover the financial cost of our legal expenses going forward. That's the hope. Um, we should know if, if everybody agrees to that in the next couple of weeks because we're finalizing the letter and sub submitting that to PCP so they will have to respond. But in talking to Dan Spitzer, I'm, I'm excited uh, to anticipate that we should have minimal uh, legal expenses in the 2021-2022 fiscal year. And yeah. because remember, from here on going forward, whether it's at Wilma Wright with their project, which is also coming back, by the way. Um, the legal expenses on our side are paid by the applicant. And also to add to that, um, Renee, anything that Hots and Russ is doing, we already have a budget established for them. And this, this transfer that I'm talking about here is um, a transfer from the Osborne read between the three categories that they have. So I'm not dipping into funds from any other attorney. I'm trying to keep it in-house with the one attorney. We'll see where it falls out. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just talking about the most recent stuff that uh, Osborne has had to work on because that'll be in this budget year. So I wanted to make sure we had enough to cover cover that. I mean, sure. our current, current budget because that was just done. Uh, the work was just done and we probably don't have the invoice yet. No, we don't. I believe, um, I believe we're running ahead this year. I think we're going to have more than enough money in the legal categories to cover our legal expenses and specifically the legal expenses with 75 Monroe. Okay. Okay. Any other questions regarding the attorney transfer? Frank, you're good with that? I'm good. Okay. Then the only other one that I have, I've done that is kind of um, early for me because I usually wait to move this money at the kind of last minute at the year end. Right now, um, our contingent again under sending accounts, vendor sending accounts about a third of the way down. We have a contingency fund that has twenty six thousand two hundred thirty one dollars in there. I am proposing to use this money to cover the expense on the upper half where it says uh, needing funds under category 8540.4 for drainage, which we're sitting at a negative balance of 29,885. And the reason we're sitting at 29,885 is because this is covering uh, unbudgeted items that had taken place for drainage issues in front of Village Hall and on Monroe Avenue right up by you and on Locust Street. So we weren't planning on them. That is where they fell out. Um, I was hoping to use the money that I have working within the budget instead of going out and breaking the reserve that I have. I would like to preserve that as long as I possibly can. It might show up at the end, you know, closer to year end that we may have to do that. But um, for right now, I'm just trying to use the money that I have within our budget to take care of our budget. It might be that we don't have to tap into that um, that reserve. So um, that's kind of where that sits. I don't know if anybody has any further questions about that. The other categories that are on here is just ones that we did have for overruns that we weren't planning on. And um, I'm just covering the negative to make them positive. Um, at this point in case the comptroller's walked in here and asked to see the books. So it, just that you are aware that this is part of your oversight and um, to take care of things. Any questions? If, if not, um, I would need a motion to approve these budget transfers. Um, it's so moved. Second. That's your second. Oh. Okay, roll call. <laughs> Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Trustee Lamphere. Lamphere, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Motion passes. 
thank you everyone yeah it works all right the next thing on my list is to actually go into the uh budget uh wish list considerations what i did is i took all the stuff that you had presented to me the last time around and what i really need to have you do is to go through here and tell me um whether or not you want to add them to this budget you're not sure you want to put them on hold or if they're not something that you want to consider for the upcoming budget at all and then i could put those into a delete column and then once i have all this uh your basic list together i will transfer all of that into the budget program and we'll come out with numbers and see where we are and have to again uh reevaluate what's uh what the village will go forward with for the upcoming year so that said um what are notice display boards right there under the office is that notice the notice display boards this is something we have struggled with for a long time um we really don't have a good place to post like we're closed or the upcoming meeting schedule and agenda so if somebody came to the office like on the weekend wanted to see what's going on they can't we have no good spot even for like our covid notices you still be trying to get them so people can see them like call the office if you're standing outside you know for instruction you're here we just don't have a good spot and i know this has been something i've asked for every year pretty much um and i know there's concerns with putting them on the building whether posting one in the yard but we really need to find a way to get notices out to the public regarding the village business so it's especially that's outside is it like a glassed in case it's yes ex absolutely a glass in case where we can just go in and pack up the notices currently we post our notices in the village hall right so you have to come inside and you have, you have to come inside. close to the public right and right now we're close to the public so we really don't have a good spot to put out public notices so so, so dorothy are you thinking of a freestanding stand, box near the beginning of the sidewalk from the parking lot or where are you thinking of putting this either way either a box attached to the building or near the parking lot somewhere where people can go and walk up to it and go oh they got a meeting coming up here you know oh there's an event oh the office is closed to the public call this number i've arrived in the parking lot you know if i have a question something we just don't you have a way have this, is, this is a way you that um like yeah because we've had the problems with people taping the notices on the doors and damaging the doors and that's a way of avoiding it if we can have somewhere where we can put the office is closed so we're getting notification out to the public right and we would need two probably one for the front of the building one for the rear to accommodate the traffic patterns i mean i'll happily work with yeah. you bob to find a good solution, but I really think we need to invest a little bit of money so we're notifying the public properly. Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. I think two boxes make sense. So if you come to the front porch, you're gonna see something. On the front porch, I think the best place to put it would be at the end, on the end wall, where it won't, it won't affect the facade, but it will still be readily visible for anybody that comes to the front door. Right. And I think- on the, on on the, the, I'm sorry. Couldn't it be What's on that? a pedestal, Bob? Couldn't it be on a pedestal? I've seen, I've, I've seen them on a pedestal. If you have an example, Lily, send it. I, I think that's not a bad idea. And I think for the back, the back, I think a freestanding one right at the beginning of the sidewalk, you know, before they come up to the building, and you could see it right there. It would probably, probably, or yeah, there, yeah, there are some simple. Uh, there are some very simple ones, of course, but they're not historic looking, but they're. Right, that's what I was going to ask. We'll have to pay a little bit more because it has to be fancy. Again, okay, I, I, okay, I don't have to be fancy. Simple is fine. <laughs> I think something understated. Yeah. You know, you don't want it to, yeah. on the front of the building, you really don't want it to show. You just want it to be visible so people can read it and get the information. Right. So if, right. if you saw a pedestal one or something like that, that could be, you know, inconspicuous behind a column, but visible to visitors on the porch, I think that would be fine. Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Okay. yeah, like I said, I'm gung ho for any style. I just feel we need something out there to inform the public and save, yeah, okay. like you said, the doors and everything and the glass with trying to, you just, there's no good way to put a notice up on the building. 
No, the, yeah. it, it, town hall has something like this on the front of town hall, and we should yeah. have something similar. It needs to be on the front. Yeah, outside. I mean, yeah, yeah. gotcha. Thank well, you. we want them at the wa walkable entrance, Renee, and as well as the parking lot. We really want them at the walkable entrance too. So I, I think two signs make sense because healthy people like Renee and I always walk the village hall. Sometimes I ride my bike when I'm in a hurry. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, so the other big expense here, I mean, obviously the building repairs, we don't have, um, I don't know the specifics of the building repairs, but the air conditioning units, that is, are those two new units? Yeah. In the office? Okay. They're relatively new. Yeah, they are. Uh, the, no, the no, 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 no. No, the, no, the air off. conditioning units are old. They came, we had them in, uh, those are the first ones we had installed when Ann and I were working together many moons ago. So they that, are. Asking, is this proposal for two new, or I don't know how many um, units are in there, but these are new units because the other ones are ailing? Uh, aging. Getting, I mean, they, they could aging. crap out any time they could go at any time but the anticipation i would say we're looking at two unless the recommendation is one unit can do it depends on you know what has changed since air conditioning and how you know feasible what would be the best solution but um you know i think you know, I, you know i'm just gonna uh, uh what about the heating system did we still have a, an oil furnace right we have two oil furnaces and the solution I'm proposing in this budget is for one to replace the two. That would be the most efficient way to go, talking to our heating guy. And it would have to require some moving of ductwork. Uh, but let me ask a question. Um, would they, would we go to gas? I mean, I'm, we haven't gone to gas. We would have to install a gas line to the front of the building. But it we seems already, to me it would make sense. What's we that? already have gas. We have gas when oh, we, we switch. Yeah, when we switched the village hall over and got the new heating system then for the village office area, and that's gas. So it is gas now, okay. All right, so no oil there, tanks there downstairs. Three in the, there are three furnaces in the basement. Two of them are oil and one is gas. Okay, so so the two that are oil, we should... Get rid of Those would be the two that would go. Place with that gas. Be, yeah, yeah, I assume that's what this is for. Too. I'm sorry, because that would be a significant savings in terms of the annual heating costs going to, to natural gas. Right. Yeah, I believe natural gas would be cheaper. All right. Do we need to get up to date estimates on that cost? Yeah, we would. Be how, how long? All right. So so let's George, let's revise George that estimate. Okay. George is the one who had worked on both of those units for us before, so. I don't know if he's been here to update anything, but in any case, he would be the one we would get the quotes from. Well, I, I would move we get a, an up-to-date estimate, and I think if we had to choose between the air conditioning and the furnace, I would go with the furnace because I think that'll save us yield savings and the, the heating costs. And that's the recommendation I'd make to the board. The furnaces are more detrimental to be replaced. Um, but we did want to get the air conditioning units on the list to start understanding we're going to have to replace those as well because we, they're working, but they're hitting that they're age. age. They're aging. They're aging. I understand. May I may I ask a question? This is Trustee Lanthier. Uh, have we looked at all into mini and into the split? Um, mini splits. Ball unit that heats and does air conditioning both as an option. We have not. Um, I don't know anything about that style, but we can check anything that it's worthwhile. I, I, I can comment on that. I think, you know, th those tend to work better on smaller spaces. Um, the difficulty okay. of doing that here is because we have a masonry building, you know, right. just dug through the is wall yeah. Yeah. is a major, major, major endeavor um, where you would put that would be an issue on the outside of the building. I don't think, I, you know, we could investigate it, but I don't think it's gonna really be feasible on this building, Lily. Okay. Okay, just that idea. Nope. Way to get both, that's all. 
Renee, you mentioned the building repairs for the 27.5. In your packet, there is a listing of oh, okay. uh, Easter building restoration, and it breaks down what that 27.5 consists oh, there of. It is. I see it. <laughs> okay. I see it. And okay, so that other question I had was the pa painting. Um, is it that is something we need to do? You've got both exterior. It looks like for ten thousand. Is that? I'm ashamed to say that I have not paid attention to the state of the paint on. Um, but is this something? I don't, I don't think the exterior needs it this year. I think the the only part on the interior that probably needs it is the office and some touch up in the front hall. Because I think the staff wanted to change the color of the office walls. So and the, 10, the ten thousand for building painting, I assume that meant the outside. I so think that is. I think that is the outside. I know we had the outside touched up this year, and I think we just want to start again, recognizing we're probably going to have to do that in the next couple of years to give it an overall. Okay. So yeah, that's, I, I, that's I think something we could consider maybe taking off of there is what you're saying. Yeah, that, that I would remove this year based on my evaluation of the outside. We're not going to paint the building this year. That I think can come out. <clears throat> Along with the front porch painting, both of those? Because they're both exterior. Is that what you I meant? Th I think it? there's other repairs that we have to do. I think on the front porch, the biggest thing is the tiles need to reset. We need to find somebody that can reset those tiles and get an estimate on doing it. That's something we've been putting off. Some of them are a bit loose. Um, it's a high quality finish that would be hard to replace. And before it's damaged, we should take care of that. Eventually, we're going to have to reset and do redo some of the walk because there's been settlement between the front steps and the front walk. Also, the top uh, tread on the front steps eventually that's going to have to be replaced so there are some other repairs that we don't have listed here um uh, solar panels i think if we're gonna if we're gonna look at solar panels it, we're not going to put solar panels on the building for a variety of reasons number one it architecturally would mar the historic appearance of the building number two it would be difficult given the existing high quality copper roofing systems on the roof you can't mount solar panels on there without puncturing and causing a leak in those roofs. So it's not feasible to put solar panels on the roof of this building. The only place we could put solar panels would be potentially on the either the north or the south side of the parking lot. Um, and I think we probably would have to talk to a vendor, see if it's if if it would be if if it would be there would be enough viable interest in doing that that we would get some payback in doing that um, and, and what would be the aesthetics of it. And uh, so, you know, I think we, we will have to find a vendor for solar arrays and see if see if it's feasible to put someone somewhere on the back of the property. The, the back, there's about 30 feet between the back of the parking lot and the back property line. Unfortunately, uh, that area is heavily treed. A lot of the trees aren't on our property. So I don't think that's going to be a feasible area for solar panels. The only places that I think would be feasible would be either north or south of the parking lot. Uh, Bob, this is Chessie Lampier. I thought when it was brought up that the concept was to be for them to be utilized for some reason that the DPW. Uh, I, I, that, I don't know if that's triggering a memory because I don't, I don't think that it's, you're right, the feasibility is, is not high for Village Hall. But I thought when another trustee brought up the concept of solar panels, it was in reference to perhaps the DPW building. And I don't know why that could be incorrect, but that's my memory of it. Not that that changes it. Um, yeah, that, uh, Lily, that's the, I'm uh, sorry, my dog's barking. That's what I recall too. Um, when Dan brought it up, we talked about either place. And I think, isn't it pretty shady back um, by DPW or does one of, I mean, so this is not my um, bailiwick. So somebody who's so got some more experience in uh, solar panels, maybe one of you could tell me, but I don't know if it's sunny I enough. Think, I, I think the, the one possibility, Renee, I think that might be feasible would be eventually maybe putting them on the roof of the DPW. But I think we've got to make some determinations. Are we going to keep that building long-term? Would it be would it be worth to make the investment to put solar panels up there, knowing that eventually we may replace that with a newer building? 
Um, the other thing I would be concerned about because it is on the bank of the canal, I don't think we want to put a solar array right next to the towpath because that's, you know, that's, it's a national historic landmark. I, I just don't think it's a good use of the nature park and everything else. But I think there may be some areas by either on this facility or if we do eventually decide to replace the existing garage, uh, integrate solar panels with, with a new facility. And, and there may be some other places on that property that where we could accommodate it around the yard. Uh, what I don't know is, is how much, how big a solar array do you need to put in for it to make financial um, sense so you actually get a payback that will eventually pay for itself. Perfect. As far as the security cameras, um, what I had when I brought it up was envisioning something like the ring system, which I think, you know, it would just be on one door, uh, even I mean two door, two door bells. Uh, and I think it's about, cost about $250. So that, that could go in that budget line potentially. A security camera line? The security yeah. camera, what the concept was, was something like the ring. Yep, no, gotcha. So, uh, so we just need to put 250 in there or 300, something like that. I've never, yeah, something like that. 250 total for two or like 250 a piece? No, at 250, Which, I think, is the, would be the total for two. I think the two. system, like we got, it comes with a back and a front door, and it was about, uh, but let's, you know, let, about let's that not guess. If, if we have a vendor that we can use, let's actually um, follow up and get an actual price so we have a, a realistic number. Okay. okay. All right. Um, to go back to these building repairs, Bob, I think if you look at that Easter building restoration sheet, it's in your packet. I yep. think when you were talking about the tiles, is that the- I got an estimate thing? last year, that's right. Mm -hmm. For 7,200? Yep. And are any of those items things that maybe should be considered? I think they should be considered and, you know, we, it's been on our list for a, a several years. I think we should leave it on there for now. All right. All right. So then to go off and um, back to the whole office thing, rug replacements for 7,500 is a uh, delete or a hold? Hold, hold for now. Um, office painting 1,500, it should be added or held? Hold, hold for now. Uh, parking lot lighting, 6,500. Add hold. Because I think you were looking like to replace one in the back. Yeah, I, I'd say a higher priority would be to add the one light on Shane Place that would provide lighting underneath the State Street Bridge. Um, Although we might want to wait on that because it'll be easier to do after the construction on the bridge is over. I just don't well, want to I, lose sight of that. Uh, no, I have it here, I think, in the listing, but this would be for safety reasons for, you know, like evening meetings. For Village Hall. For the general yeah, public. Hall. Right. This yeah. is for Village Hall. I, I would leave it for yeah. now. If we can. Leave, leave it for now. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to go through this list later on and, and probably cut some stuff and we can prioritize, but I think leave it for now. Okay, um, the cleaning three times a week, that's because of COVID reason versus the one time a week, I, we'd have to get a quote for what it would I, be. Or, I already I have a quote. Um, the last quote I got from the cleaning service to move us to three times a week was $520 a month. Currently we're paying 240 a month for one day a week. So it's not a so, huge increase, but given the pandemic and when if we do reopen and i'm going to assume we're going to want a more a more occurring cleaning like monday yeah. wednesday friday instead of just thursday right especially if we open all right i can plug that for right now are we good with the dp uh, with the uh office items then no i have uh, very i have a question i did lose um the meeting when we were talking about heater replacements for fifteen thousand dollars is that for a furnace or two furnaces for the village office 
It's Village Hall Furnace Replacements, and I think, is that one, Dorothea? Yes, that's moving from two oil furnaces, Frank, to one furnace. And with doing that, there's going to be some duct work and other things needed. Overall, it will be a savings because it's going from oil to gas. But right. it is something well, that should be done. Let me suggest that that according to our procurement policy, which conforms to the state procurement policy, we're going to have to get estimates uh, with regards to the furnace. We're going to have to get three written estimates. And a lot of these items, uh, we are going to have to get estimates. And these, this work is going to have to be written up it's, and it's going to have to be documented in the event that, that, that we get another audit. Uh, I just would like to raise that point. I don't Correct, think that should be an issue. This is just the start to get the numbers into the budget. So we have a starting point to leap off of because we have to start somewhere and you're not going to go get all three estimates at this point from companies because we're not going to pick right now. We might not even budget it, but we do need a number. So, you know, getting one number from George, our guy that has done all the work here is a good point to start with. I understand that, but I just wanted to raise the, the, the point that we do have to conform to the state regulations. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, moving on then to the DPW general fund items. Um, Zach, you may want to talk about your wish list items here. And then I just need again from the board to yay or nay it or delete it or whatever you'd like me to do to go forward with it from here. Hi, everybody. Hi, now. Hi, Zach. So, <clears throat> the last uh, wish list that I uh, brought to you guys uh, last meeting, I scratched uh, the generator for the DPW shop off of it. Um, I feel that it's it's something that we definitely need, but it could be uh, included to um, to fit with the overall scope of whatever we end up doing with the DPW shop if um, at some point along with uh, solar panels for the roof or whatever else if we end up doing something with this building um, <clears throat> all the work that we put into putting the generator in uh, may have to be relocated which would uh, incur more costs so I scratched that for now and I added a few other things um, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys uh, have any questions about what was on my list from last time I have a question about the. No. Oh, I have a question about the sidebar. Are we talking about this whole thing, or you just want to do equipment first? Um, uh, we can start right at the top if you want. Um, you know what I did, Zach? I'm sorry, I did not give them your list because I transferred the information to uh, this list that I created, which is the same thing that you said, but I just forgot to give them that. And I'm just noticing that in my own packet, so I apologize. Do no, no, that's fine because everything that was on my wish list is on this list that you uh, put up. Right, it should be. So maybe if you just go down that Definitely. list and then yay or nay it from there. And uh, I, I apologize. I thought I had it added it in, but no, that's that's Blame fine. The um, only thing that I don't see is the sewer uh, related um, items. They're at the very end of they're at the very end of the list. Page two. Oh, right. I see it now. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, so I, go ahead. <laughs> um, the first item is a new message board for South and East Jefferson over the Little League field. Uh, the one that we have there is constantly falling apart. They have silicone rails that are held on at this point by uh, stainless steel screws because all the glue has failed. So every time we put ladders in them, they fall out. We, um, we've had sign language come out to do repairs to it many times um, and nothing seems to really be working. Every once in a while, the inside of it will fill up with moisture and you can't read what's on the inside of it because the panels just, it's fogged. Um, so I would recommend replacing that, which is uh, already out there. Okay. So that's an. I wonder if we could just. I'm sorry. 
This is Trustee Lamp here. I'm just wondering if, Zach, we might be able to just replace the doors. Well, it's not just the doors, right. it's the problem, it's the the rails that hold the letters in place too. Um, they're, uh -huh. they're in pretty bad shape. Okay. Okie okay. dokie. Okay. Well, sign language would do the replacement maybe again? Can we get an estimate that's, from them? Yeah, that's what I was saying. So we need more estimates than just them just given the price of it. Well, true. Um, I mean, we, we can continue to cob this one together. I'm just letting you guys know that it is in, in pretty poor shape. The it's exterior looks good. at least 10 years old, isn't it? Um, Close to maybe eight. Eight. That came on around the time I started. The paint looks fine on it, which is strange because that's usually the first thing to go. But um, it's just the ins the inside of it that's that's failed. Yeah, I've got to think about that. I'm trying to remember. This is Trustee Lamb here. When uh, I did the, the work on that, I think it was. Yes, I would say it was eight years ago. So it's aging. It's out there in the weather. Yeah. Okay, so I'll add that for right now. Toolbox. Sure, and maybe we could look into yeah, repair repairing it as well might be another option. Okay, toolboxes okay. for truck three. That would seem straightforward. All right, go ahead. <laughs> I was saying that one seems straightforward. Yep. Yeah. It would uh, help me out tremendously having toolboxes because the one that I have in the back of the truck right now, <clears throat> it doesn't lock. So I have to keep most of uh, my tools and stuff in the cab and the cab is just kind of cluttered up. So it'd just be, it'd be helpful to organize myself a little bit. Okay. Desk for okay, DPW. I, I want to add one thing to your list, Zach which I don't see on here is uh, shields for the wall packs on the DPW garage. For years, I've been complaining that our own lighting doesn't comply with our lighting code. And especially considering it's adjacent to the canal in the village Arboretum, uh, I'd like to make the, get the lighting to be dark sky compliant. I cannot find shields that would match those specific lights. So I think anything that we put on those would have to be in-house. And I've been considering different ways of doing that. So what's easier to replace the lights or, or remedy the lights? Well, sheet metal is fairly cheap, um, providing that, you know, I can come up with a pretty uh, easy method of breaking them or bending them. If, we can, if we can do it in-house, then by all means, let's just do it in-house and put shields on them. That's what I'm going to try to do versus replacing the light for $300 a piece is kind of expensive. So I'd rather not do that yet. But okay. I'm working right. on a solution for that. All, all right. right. Great. So good news. Something. All right. Desk for DPW. Without any snow, it's a good time to, to get that job done. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Do you need a desk for the DPW? Aren't you happy with the cardboard boxes you've been using? <laughs> yeah. A desk? Oh yeah, that's next. So the toolbox is for the truck. Is that? That's a yes. A okay. Zach, did you see that there's a couple of boxes that by the front door of Village Hall that I moved in on Martin Luther King Day that are for you? Yeah, he's yeah, I picked those up uh, yesterday. Thank you very much. Okay. 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 All right. Um, yes, yeah, a new desk for the DPW office. Currently, I'm working on a desk that's about half the size of Mary's, and uh, it, it's just it's Is this probably from 19. <laughs> it's probably from 1972. It'd just be nice to get something that's uh, twice as big, something in the L shape, because my desk is constantly cluttered. This is, I know, um, not a necessity, but something that would help me out. Were okay. those roadside specials when? I think those have been there since John Earls. No, yeah, I, was gonna I think say, it's John Earls likely from 1955. Oh, that's what it looks like. We can get a few more years out of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's so probably a please, yes. 
And are you living at the highway garage for your washer dryer combo? Yes. <laughs> um, because we deal with sewers, it's <clears throat> we we have a shower, but we had to re put the stackable washer and dryer that we have in our shower, so we no, we no longer have a shower. Um, now <clears throat> the shower or the the washer and dryer. Um, every once in a while, we'll get a a, um, a natural gas smell coming out of it. Um, we've tested it, and it's nothing to the point where we would have to worry about it. But I'm just thinking that it's starting to fail. So I'm hoping to replace the washer dryer. Let it go, new building. <laughs> That's one option. Don't listen to me. <laughs> so I should add that one to the list for right now. Um, yeah. Yes. New, new decking on West Pavilion between Aladdin's and Lock 32. <clears throat> yeah. What, Can we get a grant for that? Yes. Go ahead. Kathy Lampier, can't we get a grant for that? That uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. That if we did, we'd probably have to match it to a point. see what's available. Most most grants that we would get, we would have to match anyway. So it's gonna it's it's gonna cost us something regardless. It's gonna cost the village something regardless. Okay. Um, um, I don't know. Also, so, I, um, Zach, I think I got an estimate from Rick Shinnett, uh for restaining of the pavilions next year. Both of them, the red stain is pretty faded, and both of them probably could benefit from a refreshing of the stain down on Shane Place. Yeah, that was on our list of things to do this year, but because of the two months that we lost, um, we did not have the time to be able to do that. So it, I, I think you, we have somewhere, maybe we could add that to your list, but I think I got a reasonable quote from Rick to do that. And uh, I, I think it okay. makes sense to farm that one out. It'll free you up during the time of year when you have a crunch. Okay. If you, if you happen to come across that, well, Bob, if you could forward it to me, that would be helpful. I gave it to Dorothea, so it's somewhere here in the office. It's no longer in my possession, which it's I know I can guarantee I, I would lose it. And so I, I, if you need me to get a new one from Rick, I can also do that. All right, we'll, we'll check it out. All right, uh, so the new decking for the West Pavilion, what is the decision on that is that is it like crap is it crushed is it unsafe well it's getting it's to the point where the wood is checked and i think zach has done a lot of repairs over the last two years but i think in general it's now uh, over 25 years old uh the expected life of pressure treated boards is about 20 years so I think it does make sense going forward uh, to, to look at replacing that decking. Okay. Along with that, there's drainage issues because there's so much stuff that's filled in between the cracks um, that water just tends to pool on it next to the pavers um, where the, the Lock 32 pavilion is going to be. Um, right. So it's, it's creating a bit of a hazard there uh, as a slick spot too. So we're going to have to tear that up to be able to fix that so at the same time it may as we may as well just get in there and replace all the boards okay the case 321 f tires you don't need them just leave them on the blocks it'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> those are very expensive tires and the tires that we have on are getting bald so we do need to replace those <laughs> Yeah, I think that's kind of a no-brainer, even though it's a hefty price. That one in there. Unless the board, unless the board sees differently. All right. Um, crack seal all roads. Um, not sure where we're at with road projects at this point. Um, anything that we would put towards a road project, um, <coughs> I think we should start to accumulate some money towards South Street, um, because that's I, honestly in the in the worst shape of all our roads at this point and a few years behind schedule so um if something needs to be done to the roads as some sort of road improvement 
Uh, crack shielding is a good method to cover all the roads and also prolong the life of the roads that we have. Zach, um, all, because of the detours and the, I mean, the roads are going to get a lot more use um, because of the State Street Bridge closure and some of the other uh, resurfacing that's going to be happening. Do we want to wait or is that something that like the crack seal can happen anytime? <laughs> The, the crack seal can happen, happen any time, any time. and I think, it's I think it is on the road starting to pitch and, and heat. So um, okay. every road is going to move and it's going to crack a little bit, and this is just going to prolong the, the surface life. Of it. Okay, so we do have to kind of dance around the road closures a little bit, right? Because yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay. okay, all right. It moves Zach, pretty quick. Can you and, an analysis to evaluate what what roads would are the highest priority for that treatment. Uh, yeah, I mean, so the quote that I have is for all the roads, and not all the roads would necessarily need it, like um, Heather, Hurst, Courtney, um, Green Hill, that area. Um, there are sections of Washington Ave that would need it, Lincoln Ave. Sutherland Street's a mess. That would definitely help on Sutherland Street. Um, <clears throat> parts of Rand, uh, Church Street, they're just with all of the repairs that we've done through there. Um, that's going to go through and seal a lot of the cracks from that. South Street, I mean, it, it is going to get pretty well abused with the traffic that's going to be running through there. So we can either leave it a alone or we can dump a little bit of money on it just to kind of ease, you know, everybody's I think we should money. dump a little money. The other one, yeah, we've got another repair to do this year on Locust, right? Yeah, so that was the other thing I wanted to bring up that is not on my wish list, but um, with the amount of money that we spent on drainage repairs this year, um, with the sinkholes that opened up, they're unexpected. We should probably have that amount of money uh, put into the budget for this coming year because out in front of the office, we only did half of what is owned by the village and, excuse me, the uh, the rest of the system that is owned by the village in that area is going to have to be replaced also which is going to cost about the equivalent of what we paid for the repair. So having uh, approximately $40,000 in drainage um, is going to cover us for any unknown and also hope to. And another road that is going to take a beating is Shane Place um, during the, uh, the bridge closure. People are going to use it a lot more. Are we anticipating that we will have to cover the cost of that? And will it be in this budget year? That I don't know. The last I heard that, um, I think one of you guys were saying that the DOT offered some sort of assistance with it. I thought that was still up in the air at the last meeting that I was at, but um, Mayor Corbin. We haven't you're... heard back from, from DOT, and, and um, I think we need to follow up on them. If they don't provide assistance for repairing Shane Place after it be, is used as a detour, even though it's not the official detour, I think we should talk to our state representatives and see if we could get a grant like East Rochester and Fairport have uh, to assist with rebuilding a road that does handle regional traffic. Because you're absolutely right, it will take uh, quite a bit of abuse uh, with the detour traffic once the State Street Bridge is closed. All right, so we don't, we'll leave that one out for now until we get some more information. <laughs> Yeah, and we, we still have some more patchwork to do it throughout Shane Place, and there is also failing drainage structure in it too, um, which means that the more traffic that goes through there, the more likely a sinkhole will open up and we'll have to get them into an emergency. But where, where is the failing dra drainage structure, Zach? Uh, down um, the pavilion by uh, the, the east end. We've already done one repair. Um, we were unable to get in there and cut the pipe out completely and replace it because the, the, the pipe is rotting to the point. Um, or just didn't, we weren't able to do that. So we bent old road signs to cover up the hole in the top of the pipe. So we just cobbed together a fix for the time being. So I'm, I'm waiting for that to let go. Well, I think we better put something in to address that because that sounds like it's, it's a sinkhole waiting to happen. So what's it going to cost to, is this, a, is this, so this is a pipe that goes from one side of the street to the other? 
Yeah, right outside of, um, I think it's building K, is it Bill Walls that, that was there? Um, and in outfalls to the canal. So to replace that pipe, that means we're going underneath the curb, underneath the rosebed, um, digging up the canal path and also the bank. How big a pipe is it? I believe that's a 18 inch pipe. Let's part let's of it maybe. That. Yeah, um, it, I, I can't guarantee it's 18. Maybe it's 12, but it, it's a rather large pipe. I'm just wondering, is this one that we put in or is it one that DOT put in the last time they redid the bridge? It's well enough off of the main road. So I would say it's probably village owned. Can you, can you take me, I wanna see that because I mean, if it was village owned, it would have been put in fairly recently that I'm surprised it would be rotten because it wouldn't be old enough to rot. But if it, if yeah. when um, the State Street Bridge was re, was built in 1974, I believe um, they re the state reconfigured the end of Shane Place the way it is now, and I, I'm wondering if it was it's from them, and I'm also wondering if they own it. It's a good question. If they own it, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, let's let's because what we'll want them to address that as part of the bridge. Can you tomorrow? Can you show me where this is, and then we're gonna we're gonna look up and upstairs and see if we can figure this out. Of course. Okay. All right. Let's do that tomorrow. I'll be in the office. In... Okay. Let's move on. Okay. You got concrete sidewalk, driveway, apron repair for twenty one twenty five North Main, and lawn restoration at twenty eight Monroe. I think those two are probably no brainers because we had drainage issues there, and we need to go back and fix things, right? Or restore. Yes, yes. Okay. Speed humps on uh, back. Sorry, Mary. Just to go back to the crack seal, um, is that something that we're going to be leaving on? Is that added? I'm going to, I'll throw it in for, for the 25,000. We'll see. We'll uh, okay. see what you evaluate, you know, as far as what would really be needed. And um, yeah, you said that 25 it. is for all of, all of the village roads, right? So yep. we could yeah. come in a little below that if we prioritize them, if we needed to. Yeah, if that, if that number had to be chewed down a little bit, I'm sure we can make it work. Okay. Um, but there are there are roads that would be priority over others. And, um, gotcha. And whatever the whatever the budget allows, then you know, at least doing something on the roads, um, I think should should be done. All right. Okay. Uh, speed humps on Bowton Avenue for twenty one hundred. Yep. So that's a new ad um, after taking off the generator for the DPW shop. The speed humps that we put out on Bowton Ave are starting to wear through. So the bolts starting to pull through the speed hump and the speed hump comes loose from the road. Um, so replacing those at this point, I think is uh, something that should be done. Everybody good with an add-in? Mm -hmm. I, would, I okay. would like to see them stay because I think Bowton Avenue is another street that's going to take a lot of heavy uh traffic cut through traffic yeah i think uh, you're right because of the bridge bridge closure so I, I i would like to see those speed humps remain yeah we're going to put them back in i just want to replace the speed hump itself because the speed humps yeah. are wearing down yeah. yeah all right state street sidewalk 650 feet north side of shown place to village line for twenty five thousand four hundred. I tried to get the DOT to question. take care of this one, but they are doing not much with sidewalks. So on the north side of the road from Chain Place to the village line, the sidewalk uh, goes from four feet to five feet in different areas, and it's heaved and it's cracked and needs to be replaced. Um, Zach, so, is that, is that, which side of the street? Because I don't know north from, so is it, um, is it the on? Shane, the Shane Place side of the street, the Shane Place yeah. side. Okay. So the extension that we talked about at the on the other side of the street, the south side, is that included in that twenty five hundred? Twenty five. No, the DOT. DOT is doing that. They're going to. Okay, they will do that. Okay, so, got it. 
Zach, I have a question. There was talk about um, the sidewalk connection to Northfield Common with this, um, who owns that? We talked about that in the active transportation plan and again in the comp plan. The, um, and Mayor, Mayor Corby, maybe you remember, but um, that was identified as a missing gap. Could we tie this in together? Or where, where, where are you talking about, Renee? Northfield. Remind me. On that side, connecting it to to um, Shane Place. There's no sidewalk over on that side, so you have to crop. And maybe um, this can wait until after uh, the bridge. Um, project, but there's no sidewalk on that side. What? Identified in our comp plan and our uh, active transportation plan. There's sidewalk, there's no sidewalk on both sides of Shane Place at the east end. I'm trying to think of where you're thinking. I think she's talking about where um, Olive is. Isn't that right, Renee? On that side between. Uh, Renee, you're Renee, muted. You're, you're, you're oh muted. My God. Renee. I, yeah. I clicked my own darn mute button. Jesus. Um, <laughs> I yes, it's just it's a little segment, and I know even little segments cost a lot of money. But um, if we were, uh, you mean where out, it turns the corner, but there's no curb ramp there at the corner yes. of the entrance to Northfield yeah. Common in Shane yeah. Place. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Yeah. We we should if we're going to do sidewalk uh, work on State on Street, let's side. address that yeah. and take care of that. Yep, yeah, I that believe that's right on the corner. Of private property. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. So it's on the north side from State yep. Street going into, yeah, where Olives is and whatever that little, uh, whatever's on the corner, I can't remember. But um, but yeah, it's a little segment, but it was identified. So anytime we're supposed to be keeping these things in mind when we tear up sidewalks and whatnot. So if we're gonna do that little section, it might make sense to, I mean, if we're gonna do the work on the north side, we should at least look at what it would be to complete that. It's not a very big segment. I believe that's gonna be part of the DOT's project is making all the curb ramps compliant ADA. Okay. ADA compliant. So, um, so they, little, they made may, a little sidewalk there? Yeah, they may, that may fall in their scope of the work. Okay. Well, right, uh, right now it's kind of a sidewalk to nowhere, right? Yeah. And so there's no should, crosswalk there. We should ask about that at the next um, meeting about the project, about the State Street um, project. Yeah. Yep. But anyway, okay. So let's leave. We can leave that there. But whenever we talk about the project, we should at least consider okay. that little segment, depending on what DOT does. Because that that little section of, of road there is considered State Street, right? No, it's it's yeah. Shane Place. It was it was rebuilt. That section of Shane Place was realigned when they built the State Street Bridge. And so even though the state built it, it's still a village street. All right, because it just popped into my head that that's considered 50 State Street down there. So I wasn't sure if it was just yeah, Northfield. Well, I, you're right, Zachary. I think that I had. The, the planning board ran into that uh, when they were looking at a site plan, reviewing a site plan for, I can't remember exactly what was going on down in Northfield Commons, that they discovered, I thought that they, it wasn't, it was privately held. And so any sidewalk would be at the expense of the owner of the property. So, but definitely we should look into it and find out. Okay. The, the sidewalk, yes, because, because Shane Place is a street by prescription, the village has a right to 20 feet from the center line, which would encompass both the pavement of the street itself, the curb, the tree lawn, and the sidewalk. So we have okay. acquired those sidewalks. Technically, they are ours. Um, the reason 50 State Street has that address is because before Shane Place was realigned, uh, there was a separate entrance to Northfield Common from Shane Place, and you went directly from State Street into Northfield Common, unlike the way it is right. now. So right. that's right. that's okay. why that it's left over from before that happened. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thanks. All right. Next. Okay. Moving on. Utility trailer for ninety five hundred. Want to speak to that, Zach? 
Um, yeah, the trailer that we currently have is a 16-foot uh, tilt trailer, and I believe it's from 1968. Uh, and we've replaced the deck boards a lot. The, um, the frame is starting to show some rot. Um, in the past, we've gone through and, and scraped and repainted the rusty spots. Um, we, we have rewired a lot, um, just looking for something new. And, and what do you use it for, Zach? Hauling equipment, so the heavy equipment, like the toolcat, the bobcat, um, rented equipment, the roller. It's, it's heavy duty. It's not just a, a normal landscaping trailer. It's something that's gonna hold up to uh, uh, equipment that weighs 6,000 plus. Um, so it's something that gets used regularly every year? Yes. Okay. All right, next. Equipment rentals, 3,500. I think that's kind of a no brainer. You need to have rent equipment. We need to have funds for that. Yeah. If, every, if so, everybody's good with that. Yep. Okay. Easy enough. Uh, catch basin construction. I think what I need here is a guesstimate about how many you think you might like to uh, redo with reasonably to be redone in the next fiscal year and i'm, I'm going to say a thousand dollars a piece roughly speaking um sure and i would say man a thousand dollars what's our, our our uh typically uh budget on on catch basins i'll have to budget? answer you that question tomorrow i think i usually put in like Five, six thousand. I may have put in nine thousand this year. I don't recall. But I can answer you tomorrow. I'll look it up on the uh, on what the December run is. Can I ask okay. a quick question? There's office associated with that. Is that the catch, catch basin in the driveway? Is that needing work? I was wondering that myself. I don't know. I just have the note. And also the hot patch. I'm not sure why that's on under the office also. It was meant to be TPW because I just it copied the title from the page before, so that should be right. okay. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't over here. No, and if this is... go ahead, Mary. I was just going to say if it belongs over here or you know wherever, it's going to go into the same category, whether it's village hall or whether it's somewhere out on the road. It's a catch basin. And that money would be just designated for that work there. So um, okay. you can get back to me on a number, what you might think might be an okay number to throw in there, whether it's, you know, whether you're thinking of five or 10 to get done or whatever. Okay. I would say whatever we, we, we typically use, I'm guessing maybe $7,500, $8,500 for hot patch and, um, uh, maybe six to eight thousand dollars for catch basins because all that is done in-house labor it's just material which is uh, some concrete um, <clears throat> and frames and grates which I believe we still have plenty of stock um, so I don't think we'll need any of that okay so for the catch basin construction I'll put in eight thousand for right now and then we can uh, okay. revisit that number Mary, and then yep. Mary. Mary, I think historically we've budgeted a number of about ten thousand dollars, and that's that's been pretty close to what we've been spending. Yeah, that, I'm, that's what I'm recalling, I, but I don't remember what it was this past year was, which is what he yeah. was asking me. So yeah, I think historically that's the number. Yeah, I can put in ten, and then we'll go from there. And the hot hot pitch number you said was how much? Uh, whatever we have historically used would probably work for this one also, but I'm guessing between eight and ten thousand dollars. All right, I'll put in ten for right now, and then we can talk about it. Okay. All right. Um, I think that, that you have any other things that you might have thought of that you'd like to add to your portion of the uh, DPW? If you guys want to go over the sewer fund items right now, we could do that too. Yeah. That could be yeah, let's easy. do it. That's at the bottom of the list. Yep. So um, recently we've been 
working at 85 South Street, um, clearing out a root infestation, uh, infiltration to the main that cuts in between two of Mike Newcomb's properties there and has caused backed up backups into one of them. Um, we've camera, we cameraed it and video inspected it. So I know for a fact it needs to be lined. And this is something that has been, has been problematic and we should probably do something about it. And lining it would probably solve it for the next 20 years. <clears throat> Proposing okay, so that needs like to what stay. we did in Stone Gate. Okay, so 70, for 85 South, that's an ad. Um, Sutherland Street, East and West. Yep, so Sutherland Street has also been problematic with root infiltration. Um, <clears throat> I've responded to many backups throughout there, and uh, maybe about five, six years ago, we had a pretty gnarly one that uh, we actually had to dig up um, the sewer pipe to uh, the the flush truck's hose got stuck in there. We had to dig up the the, the pipe and replace it in the middle of December. Um, so to kind of get around that, I would recommend the mining the entire system, uh, top to bottom, both sides of the road. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. I'm gonna say that since the sewer flush, sewer fund is pretty flush with funds, that whatever we can't uh, cover in the regular budget, that maybe some of that could have an appropriated fund balance amount to go to that um, purpose. To take care of that issue, it's that just a whole, That's you know, why we've been already. building up the fund balance to fund projects exactly like this. So that is a good use of the fund balance. Okay, so you're good with all those, and then back up to other items for consideration. Um, just real quick, trustee sets her hand to go. So. She yeah, she, she sent me a text. She had to excuse herself. She has another obligation. Okay. Well, this should be fairly okay. quick. All right. Streetscape flowers and uh, Christmas. Uh, I'll use the same number that I have for last year. And I think we have some uh, quotes from Bristol's already for things. So I'll, I'll plug that in and then we can go from there if that's good with you, Lily. And that includes yeah. the extra money for the wreaths we put up because I think that was a hit. I think I think we had a very attractive uh, decor. The decorations look great this year. I agree. I think that might be good, Dad. Uh, benches for State Street Corridor. Are you got twenty five hundred here, Lily? Were you thinking of these benches would be a couple that the village would put up um, in yeah, our couple, name, or would they be donors? Well, it, in our names, you get things started, but they wouldn't have backs. This is a backless style bench. It's similar in style to what we have, but it has no back, so it's less expensive. So actually, I think it's closer to, not this is a big deal, but closer to 2000 and probably even less than that. All right. But if we, I, I'm, I'm willing to say 1500 and if we only get one bench, uh, that's fine. I just try to like get people thinking, you know, once they see one bench and they go buy it and, you know, realize that they could donate one, it might get the ball rolling. That's what I was hoping. And where, where are you and thinking plus, of putting the bench, Lily? Uh, on State Street between, you know, where the new sidewalk Near? is going in. So uh -huh. it would be okay. like a good opportunity for that. And also because there are no places to sit between mm -hmm. Wood Creek and Shane's Alley, and there are a lot of older people that walk that path. So I just thought it would be Makes nice sense. to have a place to sit. Yeah. Okay. Nice. But no. Lily, I, Lily, I can leave the 2500 number in there for now until we see where we fall out, you know. With, uh, okay. Yes. And then that, that could be in cut. the end. And then we're if you want to modify it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, lighting conduits for Main Street. We talked about last time around getting a Quote from Mr. Quagliata for the tree, for having power in the tree pits. 
we were going to try to phase that because we probably the entire to do all of it we probably couldn't afford it but we're going to try to break it down by phase and at least do one phase of it this year okay um, so the, the phases need to be established and who is going to contact uh quagliata can i, I thought it was zach, but i yeah, can do no, it go ahead zach zach was going to say something you've got the floor thank you uh lily so i i did some reconnaissance work and i went into fairport to take a look at the trees and you're absolutely right yeah. they're all lit by extension cords running off of the top of the, the street lights so they're all hanging um maybe eight nine ten feet off of the sidewalk which i didn't think you know that would be the best solution but it's working for them and it would be a pretty uh cheap an easy solution for us rather than running conduit underneath the sidewalk to the street there. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. Yeah, exactly. If Fairport can do it, we can do it. I, I think I think it would be great. But, I don't think it'll be five thousand dollars. I think it'll be closer to maybe two thousand. Um like the only cost that would be associated with that is just getting a lift in there for us to be able to hang it in the tree. Okay, yes, yeah, that's right. And obviously the, the lighting and tension cords also. Right. The lighting conduits for okay. Shone Place, is that the same idea? Shone, uh, I think it would be different because you're, you're passing over the path. I think you would definitely look, be looking at conduits and that would be an expensive project to be a capital funds project. So I don't think they've got, that's gonna go on the budget this year. That's just, that's well, my the, the other The other thing besides the conduit, the other improvement we were looking at doing was getting, you know, every year, um, the crew has to gerrymander the, um, the Lighting, base right. of the, the light poles. And we were thinking about getting right. dedicated GFI outlets installed at some of the lights. And I think uh, to, to get a price on phasing some of that still makes sense because number one, every time we take those covers off, they wear out, it's hard to replace them. It's, it's become a problem. And I think uh, it, it would make the process of putting up the lights much easier if we had dedicated outlets. That and also when when we do go back to having candlelight night, um, any vendors that would come in that would need power, rather than allowing them to stick their hands into the base of the lamp to plug stuff in. Yeah, yeah that's a lot of On the outside for them to be able to plug into it would be a lot safer and usable. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. Well, it's Agreed. Last time I got a quote for that, it was, um, I want to say it was $110 um, a piece for each for each light bulb. That's why we should probably phase it and pick a number uh, number that we could do that would be achievable in a, in a given fiscal year. Agreed. All right, speed sentry signs for two units is about $13,000. So that's an add in because the board did want to try them out. Uh, yep. last, last two items bridge project, the two new lights above the deck was 2,500. That was something you mentioned earlier in the meeting, Bob. So that's 2,500 is a good number yep. for right now. And that's right an now. add in. And then South Street reconstruction i've got 250,000 from it and the information is in your packet from last year um i know earlier when we spoke that is something that requires a meeting between bob zach and frank so um maybe from your meeting then we could take a, a number of what you might think might be able to be accomplished for that particular I, I, purpose. Think, I think what we talked about to, to be more specific I think Frank, Zach, and I, in our last meeting, we talked about getting a proposal from an engineer to at least do the design work for South Street so we would have the design work started and paid for in this fiscal year, which would also provide us with a more accurate cost estimate for the actual project. Yeah. That sounds right. We actually talked to Fisher Associates and uh, that's where that's where we we came up with that two hundred and fifty thousand dollar number. Um, the idea is to let let an engineering firm like that run the whole project. That would right. be the best. That would that would be the best thing for us. So right now, uh, two hundred and fifty thousand is 
is a bit realistic. So we should run with that number. Okay, okay. good. Uh, I think Frank, I Frank, I'm sorry. Frank, I think you said you're um, between 25 and $50,000 just for for them to engineer and coordinate everything as a GC for that project. So right. if I'm, 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 a, I'm going to assume that it's probably gonna be 10 to $15,000 for them to draw the plans up and the rest of the money would have been spent for them to GC the project afterwards. So um, if we brought them in just to, to find out what it would cost just to, to get everything as a, as a drawing, as an idea on paper, well, you would generally uh, estimate that if the project is is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, the consultant costs for construction documents, bidding and negotiation, and construction supervision is going to be between twelve and fifteen percent of the project total project cost. Yeah. So I think they're anticipating when we talk to them around two two hundred thousand dollars for total construction costs. So I think the yeah. twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars extra, so the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars was for their part in that. Yep, that makes sense. That makes sense. I've is included that, the. I've included Frank's notes. notes. I included Frank's notes for the South Street paving project from May of twenty nineteen in your packets. So those. Yeah, I did a write up of that last year. Right, and that's, that's one that you know. included, Mary. That's what I included. That's just for your reference to give us some idea on costs. Right. And at the very least, I probably should put plug in fifty thousand just for the engineer portion of it for this year until you figure out what's more realistic to get done. But I'm holding the two fifty figure. All right. Anybody else have anything else to add? If not, um, we've gone through all the items on here for now. And um, I'll you, just take it. I'll take what I got and plug it into some numbers onto the program, and then we'll go to the chopping block. As we always do. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Uh, with that, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Dorothea, would you call a vote, please? You're muted, Dorothea. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Lamphere? Trustee Lamphere, aye. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Motion passes. Have a good night. Thank you, Thank everyone. You, everyone. Good Take good care. Night.